Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for the district budget meeting. My name is Steve Connolly. I'm superintendent of schools. Um, we're going to start off, we'll do some uh, quick introductions here so you know who the panel is up front. And also we have two gentlemen who are, learning, who are earning some uh, community service time. So um, we have Jacob Hamill. And we have one of the Lukes. I'm going to ask which one, though. Luke. Lucas Beck. Beck. Oh, I knew that. Lucas Beck. Okay, I did. I actually knew that. Lucas Beck. Um, you know why I knew that? Because his mom told me today, and I already forgot. Right. So um, please make sure that you have signed in the tables for your community and that you have your card. Uh, so we have here uh, Sue Austin, Assistant Superintendent, Denise Van Campen, Business Manager. We have Nancy Newbert, Board Chair. We have Dustin Price, who is representing Berwick. We have Estrita Schaefer, representing North Berwick. We have Rebecca Hopper, who is representing North Berwick. We have Lynn Manley, representing North Berwick. And it looks like Joanne Potter is right next to her, representing Lebanon. We have Denise Mallett, who is representing Berwick. And we have Becky Beal, who is representing Lebanon. Would you please join me for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The annual district budget meeting is now open, so I'll begin by calling for election of a moderator. Are there any nominations? Nominations, Dave. Second. Move nominations, please. Second. Well, that would move that along fairly quickly. Um, <laughs> time's lost. Uh, could we have uh, a show of hands? The motion is to nominate Mr. Jeffrey Day uh, as the moderator for this evening's meeting. Mr. Day, you're not in favor? <laughs> oh, thank you. I was a little worried. There. Could you join me, please? continue to be a citizen thereof, and that you will faithfully discharge to the best of your abilities the duties incumbent upon you, on you as moderator of the Maine School Administrative District Number 60 budget meeting on May 9th, 2019, according to the Constitution and the laws of the State of Maine. I do. Correct. Uh, hearing that, what I'll do is I will ask you to sign uh, this pick, but I'm going to ask you to actually sign that. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a Marshwood pen that a friend just gave me. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually works. <laughs> 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 that will be the last Marshwood pen I get from that person. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm going to you with this. Do you have a copy of the uh, moderator's manual? If uh, I will grab that if I need it, thank you. That would be lovely. On a stool behind you. Good evening. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to be your moderator again this year. Uh, just as a few housekeeping items, I'll be using the uh, main moderator's uh, manual, the 2005 edition. Thank you, Steve. 
uh, with a couple of modifications. Uh, as a non-resident, uh, the superintendent will be allowed to speak and will be asked to address any questions. And also as a non-resident, the assistant superintendent will be allowed to speak. Do you have anyone else that's a non-resident that you would? Okay. So just a few general guidelines on participation. Uh, if you could direct all questions to me, please. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, questions should be related to the article currently being discussed. When asking the question, please state your name and the town you are from. And we have uh, microphone runners, so please wait for them uh, before you ask your question. And in order to ensure everyone has an opportunity to ask questions, please do not repeat questions. Allow others to have an opportunity to speak and I'll allow two questions from an individual and we'll then uh, move on to someone else uh, uh, who uh, needs an opportunity. And also please uh, do not interrupt those who are speaking. There will no be no amendments to the amendment. And if you feel there's been an been adequate uh, time to uh, discuss a t uh, an article and answers have been provided, you may move the question. And residents, you have all received a voter card. Please use them when voting on uh, article number 14, which will be a uh, written ballot. So if we keep these uh, guidelines in mind, I'm confident we'll have a productive evening. Are there any concerns? Okay. At this time, we'll begin the uh, budget review, the, dis the discussion and voting on each article. Mr. Conley, would you like to provide an overview of the budget? Please. So we have provided community members with an MSAD 60 annual report. If you didn't have to, to bring your copy with you tonight, that's fine. There are extra copies in front of each town's tables. So feel free to come up and get a copy. I'm going to do a budget recap, hit some of the major items. First of all, the proposed expenditures from 2018-19, this school year's budget, of $41,259,614 is proposed to move in 1920 to $42,194,575 for an overall increase of $934,961. That represents a 2.27% change on the entire budget. That's the local and the state subsidy. The revenue remained, er, is uh, estimated to be close to flat for the coming year, 1819 to 1920 total difference of $18,021. The local taxes required for the proposed budget in 1819 were, uh, are $19,120 and uh, $120,648. The proposed budget of 1920 is $20,037,588, which re represents a total change of $916. Dollars ninety, uh, excuse me, nine hundred sixteen thousand nine hundred forty dollars, which is an overall increase of four point eight percent. The uh, some of the articles that I would just do a brief touch on, and if you're looking for any of the information that I'm going to touch upon, there is a section that's a little bit further back, about two thirds of the way through the booklet. You'll see where it says Article One, Article Two, and so forth. It goes through the next, uh, goes all the way through the next 11 articles. Um, first, I'll just hit upon um, article one briefly. That's regular instruction. There is an increase that you would notice in there of $630,000, $630,773. That's specifically in teacher wages, uh, teacher salaries and educational technician wages, um, approximately 80 to 83 percent of our budget is in employer employee costs. 
I'd like to note in Article 2 that there is a piece that starts out saying that it looks as if the director, the assistant director, and the MHA teaching principal, um, that is a proposed position, will have an overall decrease of 41,000, which may not make a lot of sense. Um, adding a teaching principal at MHA, which is a revenue source for us where we're able to open up our herd academy for seats from other districts at $29,500 a seat to offset our costs. The teaching principal position is $65,000. The assistant special ed director's salary is shifting to the federal funds that we receive, known as, confusingly enough, local entitlement. Article 3 is career and technical education, and that notes, that notes an $86,461 decrease, and that is because the culinary program has relocated to SRTC, so we no longer have that satellite, we no longer um, oversee the employment of the person in that position. Uh, generally, Articles 4, 5, 6, and 7 have uh, minimal shifting between lines. Um, in Article 4, though, you will see that uh, some of the lines have gone from, it will say referees seem to have been a zero line at one point and have gone to a $62,500 line. It's not that they volunteered to do it for free, it's that previously it was in a different line uh, under athletic activity account transfer. And also athletic supplies were at zero and moved to 31,850. It's not an increase of that amount at all. It's because there are new activity account regulations for schools that cause us to make some shifts within Article 4. I'm going to shift down to Article 8, which is transportation, which I think is where the next major differences are involved. In transportation, the director and shop foreman, um, we brought in a new shop foreman last year, moved it to the full-time position, and uh, in order to get that established, uh, we, we set a salary for that that was um, um, very uh, slim. And as a matter of fact, it was only 17 cents more an hour more than the people that the shop foreman supervises. Um, also, uh, the transportation director was very close to that same ceiling. Uh, so there was no space for the shop foreman to the director to the mechanic. So we have a total increase there of 22,888 um, to align those positions. Bus drivers, wages are an increase of $47,215. Monitors of 31607 And then bus leases says $105,000, a significant jump in lease purchases. That is because we are looking to pick up four large buses and two mini buses. Um, two of the large and one of the small will be will receive subsidy back from the state in the 2021 budget but we have to uh, pick up the first year of that we'll be reimbursed in later budgets <clears throat> under article 9 that's facilities and maintenance it looks as though we are it, it seems somebody might think that we are cutting wages for uh, custodial, and in fact, that is not the case. Um, we are looking at several retirements of people at the top of the <coughs> custodial scale, <coughs> and so that is one of the major drivers in the decrease in that when we believe that we'll be bringing in people who will be uh, uh, on the newer end of experience rating. Also, the, uh, there's a piece in there that says that the SROs you know, under contract and services are 179,000. Um, I'm going to note that, there, that I have a mistake in there. And what it is is it should say 159, 
doesn't impact the total budget. And there should be a separate line in there that says $20,000 for architects and the engineers to do the work on the planning phases that we have for the middle school, North Burke Elementary, Huggy Elementary, and a replacement Lebanon Elementary. So the total still comes out right, just sandwiched into one line. In Article 10, it notes, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to Article 9, just very briefly. The capital improvement plan is down $237,400. Uh, we generally look at what our fund balance is from one year to the next and figure out how much of that we can, we can assign to certain projects that we're going to have less available this year as we used about $430,000 in the 1819 budget to offset the cost to taxpayers. Article 10 is debt service, and it's the same number that's been there for 20, for now will be 20 years. $1,683,908, it is the last amount owed on Noble High School. That does not mean that the community pays that amount. I'll get to that in a minute. Article 12, is the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act. It reads that um, it asks that the taxpayers support $35,430,222. I'm gonna get my number straight at some point tonight. And 79 cents. That means that what is the skeleton that must be present for a school system to be able to open its doors? EPS does not ensure that schools will be accredited under NEX, for instance. So it's a skeletal program. Um, that is uh, the, the local taxes that are noted there uh, would be $14,417,964 to meet the minimum EPS requirement. In Article 13, it talks about school construction debt service. That is the portion that the community owe, has owed annually on the high school. The rest of that 1.683908 has come from state dollars. So $13,908 in 1920 will be the last payment on this school. And I believe we're sitting in the place where that part of the payment has been owed in the expansion of this <coughs> to seat the entire school. under. Article 14, additional local funds beyond EPS. This asks that taxpayers support $5,605,716 uh, beyond the skeletal framework of the EPS. In Article 15, it's just a summary of the budget because those other, in some of those other articles, they may go up or down in a meeting like this. And so that summary is $42,194,575. There are two separate articles. One is a new article that is separate this year. Adult, uh, excuse me, school nutrition. The local contribution of 126,000 is the same amount that's been in for 18, 19 that will be in for 1920, but the new regulations are that school nutrition will be its own standalone article. And then um, in Article 17, adult education has been its own article. So I've known Brenda has been its own article for quite a while. Okay, uh, so the amount to appropriate for adult education is proposed at $439,804 which means raising for the local share $269,178. Article 18 is authorized expenditures of grants and other receipts. I will give you an example of some of the grants that we receive that are not part of this $42 million in expenditure. 
Um, these are local entitlement, federal funds for special education. And that in this year, we know that they are just slightly under $900,000. So we project that next year's rates will be similar, although we have not received that to date. Other federal, federal funds we receive are called the titles. We receive titles one, two, four, and five. The amount for that is six hundred seventy-six thousand dollars, five hundred seventy. Excuse me, six. Why am I doing that? Six hundred seventy-six thousand five hundred seventy-seven dollars and ninety-four cents. The last major grant that we have uh, in place for next year is from the Barr Family Foundation from Boston, and that is for the Multiple Pathways Program in Kasaja here in Milwaukee. Just a little bit ago. Um, okay. And that is for $250,000. It's three fifty dollars this year, two fifty dollars next year, and one fifty dollars in year three for a total of $753,000. Um, there are two more uh, things that I will offer is that uh, there is a did you know on the last full page uh, inside cover that says in 2017-18 the regular education student costs, this is in the state documents, reports show that MSAD 60 had the lowest York County K-12 per pupil expenditure at $11,381. The York County average for 17-18 was $13,401. So an approximate difference of $2,000 per student. And that's for $2,000 over 3,000 students, so $6 million difference. And the state average was $12,198. Uh, the York County high in that year was $16,000, so just um, so just shy of uh, $14 million difference in operating costs for the two school systems compared to student rates. Lastly, I would just say that the biggest changes in this budget come down to staffing, and they are multiple pathways, social worker we pick up, we pick up some educational technicians to do a, a second step social emotional programming, a behavior intervention coach. We pick up um, an elementary social worker. So the, those total in, in total, there are seven and a half positions that are all about the complexity of the students that we have in our schools today. So it's driven by the student profile. We're learning to be trauma-informed schools. We're learning to incorporate strong social-emotional programming and behavioral interventions. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. OK, at this uh, time, we'll go through uh, artic the uh, articles. What I will be doing is I'll read the article. Uh, description of the details. I'll ask for a motion in a second, and then if there's a, I'll ask for for a discussion, and then a vote. <coughs> so articles one through eleven are to authorize expenditures in the and cost in the cost center categories. Article number one, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for reg regular education. School Board recommends $16,401,472. So move the School Board recommendation. Do I hear a second? Second. I'll call for uh, any discussion. All right, seeing none, uh, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor? And thank you. And any opposed? All right, motion passes. Article number two, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for special education, the school board recommends $7,378,409. So move the school board recommendation. Second. Do I hear any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Thank you. Opposed? Mm -hmm. 
the motion passes. And just uh, as a uh, reminder, if there is a discussion, we have microphone runners. So uh, please uh, wait till they show up with a microphone. Yeah. So Jake's on this side, Lucas is on that side. Great. Right? Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right, article number three. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for career and technical education, the school board recommends 39 million, excuse me, 39,000, so you've got me doing 39,000. $377. Do I hear a motion? So <coughs> move the school board recommendation. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? All right. No discussion. I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you. Uh, opposed? All right. Thank you. Motion passes. Article number four, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for other instruction, the school board recommends $1,081,866. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. Second. And second. Do I hear any discussion? All right, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you. And opposed? All right, motion passes. Article number five. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for student and staff support, the school board recommends $4,110,531. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. And opposed? Motion passes. Article 6. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for system administration. School board recommends one million ninety-two thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars. For your motion. So move the school board recommendation. And a second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Down front. Can we get a microphone, please? Thank you. Under Article Six, there is the salaries, wages. Could you just give me a favor, please? So could you state your name, please? Sorry, thank you. Jim Shearer, Berwick, Maine. Thank you. Um, the administrators show a salary of $365,606. How many people does that include? Three people. Three. So three people are making over $100,000 a piece in an area where the, I would make a guess that the average income is somewhere around seven for administration. Is some, I'm sorry, is somewhere what? So I would make an estimate that the average income in this area is probably closer to $70,000 a year. And here we have three people that are making, what, $120,000 a year apiece? Just question that uh, Is the question why? Oh, okay. Um, so in, in, in a simple example, um, if I were to be in the same position in York, the difference would be uh, an additional $21,000 per year. If I was to be an assistant, in, uh, a superintendent in, um, in uh, the Portland area and in some of the other communities, they're uh, as much as $30,000 in difference. Um, my salary is commensurate with the um, responsibilities of the job, and if you look at it across the board, uh, it is as well. Uh, Mrs. Austin is the senior, significantly, sorry, sorry to say, but your city significantly senior assistant superintendent in um, Southern Maine, and has numerous under, other responsibilities under her title. Um, and so there was a recommendation this year for uh, a wage, a salary to match that, and the board supported it. And then Denise Van Campen's wage was significantly below 
the state average two years ago. I'm going to say it was two years ago. And so last year, the board uh, looked at that information and agreed to uh, believe her average, her salary now is state average for a business manager. Any more questions? All right, I'll, uh, I'll call for a uh, vote. All in favor? Thank you. And opposed? All right, thank you. The motion passes. Article number seven. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for school administration. School board recommends two million one hundred ninety-six thousand seven hundred eighty-three dollars. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. I have a second. Seconded. Any discussion? All right. Seeing none. Seeing none. I will call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you. And opposed. Motion passes. Article number eight. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for transportation and buses. School board recommends three million three hundred seventy thousand nine hundred and seven dollars. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. And a second, please. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, I will call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you, and opposed? Motion passes. Article number nine, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for facilities and maintenance. The school board recommends $4,763,506. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. And a second, please. Thank you. <coughs> Any discussion? Right here. Uh, Brenda Gagne, North Berwick. Uh, I just have a question um, with uh, having, I know that you've had to take some of uh, Kevin's proposed projects off the table. My concern is if we're not going to be replacing carpeting at a schedule, uh, are there air quality tests being done to make sure everyone's in a safe environment? Yes, so in the pods, in areas of the high school where the carpeting is 20 years of age, and we're trying to do replacements with the VCT tile, um, where we've had to delay some of that work, we do have uh, we are required to maintain air regulations and, and uh, work environment, and so we do follow those testing requirements. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you, and opposed? Thank you, the motion passes. Article number 10, to see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for debt service and other commitments, the school board recommends $1,683,908. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you, and opposed? Motion passes. Article number 11. To see what sum the district will be authorized to expend for all other expenditures, the school board recommends $75,350. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. Thank you. A second? Second. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. 
Thank you. And opposed? The motion passes. All right. Article number 12. To see what some, uh, sorry, um, Article 12 through 14 will uh, are to raise funds for the proposed school budget. Article number 12, to see what sum the district will appropriate for the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act and to see what sum the district will raise and assess as each municipality's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act in accordance with the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 15688. I don't know if that's a run-on sentence or not. Um, the recommended amounts set forth uh, below are, these are the total appropriated amounts by municipality. Town of Berwick, $16,053,479.26. Town of Lebanon, $11,624,688.91. Town of North Berwick, $7,752,154.62 for a total uh, appropriated amount of $35,430,322.79. The total raised in district assessments by municipality are the Town of Berwick, $5,699,421. Town of Lebanon, $4,481,103. Town of North Berwick, $4,237,440 for a total raised amount of $14,417,964. As an additional explanation, the district's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12, as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, is the amount of money determined by state law to be the minimum amount that the district must raise and assess in order to receive the full amount of state dollars. Do I hear a motion? So I'll move the school board's recommendation. And a second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, I will call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you, and any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. Article 13, to see what sum the district will raise and appropriate for the annual payments on debt service previously approved by the district voters for non-state funded school construction projects or non-state funded portions of school construction projects in addition to the funds appropriated as the local share of the district's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12. The school board recommends $13,908. As an additional explanation, Non-state funded debt service is the amount of money needed for the annual payments on the district's long-term debt for major capital school construction projects that are not approved for state subsidy. The bonding of this long-term debt was previously approved by the district voters. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. And a second, please. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Thank you. And opposed? All right, the motion passes. All right, as uh, previously mentioned, uh, Article 14 will be a written ballot. Um, if there are any amendments uh, based on the vote, we will, uh, we will discuss that. 
I will read the article uh, and uh, then uh, we'll, have some, we'll have discussion and then uh, we will go to your respective tables for the vote. All right, article number 14. To see what the sum, see what sum the district will raise and appropriate in additional local funds, the recommend, recommended amount is five million six hundred five thousand dollars seven hundred seven hundred. Excuse me. That's my fault. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> five million six hundred five thousand dollars seven hundred. Six hundred five thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars. Wow. <laughs> uh, which exceeds the state's essential programs and services allocation model by a recommended amount of five million six hundred five thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars, as required to fund the budget recommended by the school board. The school board recommends five million six hundred five thousand seven hundred sixteen dollars which exceeds the state's essential programs and services allocation model by $5,605,716. The school board gives the following reasons for exceeding the state's essential programs and services funding model. Some curriculum decisions that the board of directors has made and our communities have supported, such as full-time nurses and guidance counselors in each school, each of the schools, as well as reasonable class sizes. Fundamentally, however, the primary reason that the EPS formula does not fully recognize the costs necessary to maintain school programs and services. As an additional explanation, the additional local funds are those locally raised funds over and above the district's local contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Essential Programs and Services Funding Act, and local amounts raised for the annual payment on non-state funded debt service that will help achieve the district budget for educational programs. Do I hear a motion? Do I move the article for the recommendation? I think we move the article, right? So move the article. And we have a second. Thank you. But it's written. It's written. Yeah. But I mean, it, yes, you know, they have to come up and write it. Yes. Yeah. They have to come up and vote on it. Yes. Yeah. Right, yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, any discussion? Get them up, please. All right. Again, Jim Shearer, Berwick, Maine. What is reasonable class size? So in the lower grades, the school board opts to ensure that um, the class sizes are 15, 16-ish range in the, middle, in the upper elementary to the middle school grades. Those run into the low 20s. And then in the high school, they're in the 21, typically in the 21 to 26 range. Although there are a few courses that have low enrollments at, at a high school, it might be a, a, an elective. Do you have a number of what our teacher to student ratio is at the moment? <clears throat> um, off the top of my head, I'm sorry, I don't. Any other questions? Over here, please. So it would likely fall under this category in the future. 
and that is a it's not a state mandate there are options out there and, and I would say that this is the spot we would find it. thank you any other questions All right, at this time, um, I would ask you to go to your respective town uh, table, desk, and cast your ballot. July 1st, 2019 and ending June 30th, 2020 from the district's contribution to the total cost of funding public education from kindergarten to grade 12 as described in the Central Programs and Services Funding Act, non-state funded school construction projects, additional local funds for school purposes under the main revised statutes, Title 20-A, Section 15690, unexpended balances, tuition receipts, state subsidy, and other receipts for the support of schools. The school board recommends $42,194,575. Do I hear a motion? So move the school board recommendation. And a second, please. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you. And opposed? Motion passes. All right, Article 16 raises and appropriates funds for the school nutrition program. To see if the district will raise and appropriate $126,000 for the school nutrition program with authorization to expend any additional incidental or miscellaneous receipts in the interest in the interest and for the well-being of the school nutrition program. Do I hear a motion? So move the article. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Yeah. Thank you. Dale Clark from North Berwick. Why is there no detailed expense category for the school nutrition program? Uh, traditionally, it hasn't been for, for the uh, separate articles, um, but we can give you some quick numbers on that. Thank you.
benefits of $221,251. These salaries and wages include the director and those in the office, as well as the kitchen staff and any substitutes they need for the program. Um, they have purchased services of approximately $42,000. Those are for things such as equipment repair, uh, computer maintenance, advertising, telephone expenses, professional development. They have supplies of $516,750. Food expenses make up the large portion of that at $450,000. Non-food expenses for the kitchen, $62,000. And then some office supplies and staff clothing allowances make up the difference there. Uh, they are purchasing 11 new point of sales service stations. So the registers that you see at the, in the cafeterias at each of the schools. Um, they, they in fiscal 19, they received an upgrade to the software that they use to run those, and this year we are purchasing new um, point of sale stations and two ThinkPad computers for the office. The total for that is $14,500. <coughs> we also have an additional $1,800 for bank fees and various memberships for the, for the food service program. So again, the total is $1,473,305. On the revenue side, we are voting in this article to um, have the local share of running this program at 126,000. They are using uh, $60,000 of their fund balance to offset this. They will receive approximately $15,000 in catering invoices. Those, that's when they provide food and beverages for various meetings and functions. They estimate $16,000 received from vending machine sales. They're estimating federal subsidy of $610,000 and meal sales from students and families of $646,500. Any other questions? All right, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Thank you. And opposed? All right, the motion passes. Article 17 authorizes the adult education program and raises the local share. To see if the district will appropriate $439,804 for adult education and raise $269,178 as a local share with authorization to expend any additional incidental or miscellaneous receipts in the interest and for the well-being of the adult education program. Do I hear a motion? So move the article is written. Do I hear a second? A second. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please. Thank you, and opposed. Motion passes. Article 18 authorizes expenditures of grants and other receipts. In addition to amounts approved in the preceding articles, shall the school board be authorized to expend such other sums as may be received from federal or state grants or programs or other sources during the fiscal year for school and other program purposes, provided that such grants, programs, or other sources do not require the expenditure of other funds not previously appropriated. Do I hear a motion? So all the articles read. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, 
Brenda Gagne, North Berwick. I just want to thank the school board members for all their hard work. I'm at a lot of your meetings on Thursday nights, and it's hard coming straight from work and having to go through the details of what we need in the school to become one of the best schools in New York County. And I want to thank you all for doing it and for supporting the superintendent and all of us. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't think I, there was a question in there, though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Any other? All right. I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Thank you. And opposed? All right. The motion passes. That, that uh, runs us through the articles. Are there any, yes. is there any other items? Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, thank you, Brenda. I was going to echo those same, same statements. That's a lot of work. Facilities and Finance Committee, thank you very much for your in-depth detail for board members for being so uh, uh, data savvy and understanding uh, and using that data savviness in the educational pursuit of improvement of our schools. I appreciate that. I appreciate the membership coming out tonight here to set this for the referendum. Uh, just a reminder, the, district, the budget validation referendum will be on June 11th in Berwick at the Town Hall that is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Lebanon Elementary School it is 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. and at North Berwick Elementary School it is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There will be an additional item that doesn't come before us tonight but comes before the voters every three years. The voters are asked, do you want to continue the budget meeting operation as you've seen tonight. So if a town votes yes, then every year we, every year for the next three years, we have a, a budget meeting to set the numbers. If a town votes no for that, then it just goes straight to referendum. And I'd also like to uh, thank Mr. Day for his uh, great oversight of this and taking care of business. Thank you very much, appreciate it. I don't think I do. You covered uh, you covered my wrap up, and I just wanted to check with the clerks if there's anything else they need. They're all set. Yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, I believe we are done. If I could get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? And a second. Uh, all in favor. Thank you. Any opposed? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have a good uh, evening. Drive safe.